And now for something completely machinima. Tracy Harwood. Um, so I've done a little bit of digging around and I've discovered. Ricky Grove. Fog comes in on little cat feet. <laughs> Phil Rice. This is the best film that I've seen all year and maybe ever. Damien Valentine. Use the machinima, Luke. Hello and welcome to And Now for Something Completely Machinima, a podcast about machinima, virtual production, and related technologies. We are all wearing the same clothes as last episode, but that doesn't mean that we stayed overnight with each other. So just, just <laughs> pipe down a little bit. My name is Phil Rice. I'm here with my co-hosts, Damian Valentine and Tracy Harwood. Hello. And reluctantly, generative AI, Ricky. Ricky, how are you doing today? That's that's great. Yeah. That's great. That's great. <laughs> this is going to be great. This is going to work really well. So this episode is my pick. And the film is titled Lonely, Episode 2, The Package Thief. And it is by uh, someone who's been, been at Machinima for quite some time. Um, would, would, I think, easily classify as a Machinima veteran. Goes by the name The Biz. And this film, this short film, is made in iClone. And it is just a delightful little story. Like, it's just, there's something about... We've, we've said so many times over the years on this show how important writing is. Writing, not just in terms of the actual lines of dialogue, that's important too, but but story as well. And this is such a great uh, example of that, that that's, that's what caught my fancy about this film. It's what made me rewatch it. Um, and it's, it's what made me laugh um, uh, with, with the writer of the film. Uh, it's just, just wonderful wit, wonderfully executed, great voice acting. Um, it's a, it's a comedic little story that basically follows this kind of a lone ranger character um and there is a uh a package thief in his in his building and i won't spoil the uh the story but it's it's you know kind of trying to unravel what's going on with that and and solve a little bit of a of a mystery and just some some wonderfully quirky memorable characters um with uh dialogue that just really sticks with you and it, we were just talking off air about that there's a there's a staleness that sometimes seems to be creeping into productions that come out of the usual channels you know that the through the ones that make it past the cultural gatekeepers and come out in in the public sphere but there's a freshness to uh, a lot of the machinima that we end up encountering with this show. Oh, I can't think of a better example than this. Um, it was just, it was so entertaining. I, it's, it's one of the few films that I've watched in a long time where as soon as it was over, I immediately watched it again. Uh, I don't do that very often. Uh, I'll sometimes return to something later, but I wanted to watch it again immediately just because I just really appreciated the craft uh, and the 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 timing, the pacing, it's just I don't know. It's it's as a creator, I really get a kick out of seeing somebody, you know, hit a hit a base hit. You know what I'm saying? Like for to use some some baseball terminology of just someone who just cracks the ball. I just love it, and that's what this is. This is just everything connected. 
and uh, oh, it's just just wonderful. So uh, I'm curious what uh, what you guys thought of it. I really get... enjoyed it. <laughs> go on, you get you go ahead. I want to get in before Ricky does. Oh yeah, it's a good <laughs> point. <laughs> 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 So yeah, I, this is a film that I really enjoyed as well, for, for very similar reasons to you, Phil. Um, there, there's something about this, this that it kind of reminded me of the movies, not in a bad way, because obviously I is a lot more advanced, but there's something about the way the sets were built and the way the characters moved. They're smoother, they look better, but there's just something about it. And it kind of comes from that, that fun attitude that you could make something like this with it. And it's nice to see it made with Icon, uh, which is obviously a much more sophisticated piece of software. And, you know, the story was great. It was very entertaining. You laugh. And um, it's just well crafted. It's very well written and well acted. Um, and this is one of the things I like about Machinima is films like this, where it's just different and fun and entertaining. Um, so I think the Biz did a, a really excellent job. I've seen a lot of the, his previous work uh, back from the, the TMU and the TMRA radio days, uh, which also goes back to the movies as well, actually, mm. doesn't it? Yeah. Right. Um, yeah. That's right. Uh, there's some interesting twists in the story, which, again, I'm not going to spoil either, uh, but it is worth watching and uh, what, or, you know, worth watching fresh. Yeah. Um, and, you know, it's inspiring to see something like this. So, uh, yeah, I, I don't know what else to say because I just, there's nothing bad about this film. I enjoyed every moment of it. Uh, and it's actually episode two. So I need to go back and check episode one because um, I did watch this twice like you did as well. It's like, I don't normally watch the films back to again uh, so quickly. Uh, I might refresh my mind closer to the recording. But this one I watched twice in one sitting uh, after I watched all of the films together. I went back and I need to watch this one again. Uh, you know, I'm thinking like it could be that part of that is that I didn't want I didn't pause the film the first time through. And I'm I'm confident that I laughed over some of the jokes. Right. You know, I I did that which too. is just great. And it says something. It speaks to the the efficiency and the density that that the humor was packed into this. There's so many good little witty lines and and i knew that i i needed to see it again because i i knew that i had laughed over some stuff so that's that's got to be part of it yeah yeah so I, i'd like to finish with just saying can we have a, a third episode please because i'd like to see more <laughs> this, this kind of style of film um uh, so yeah i'm done uh thank well, you good choice yeah, Phil. It, i you know what <laughs> i agree with you actually that um I think every now and again, a, a film just takes you a little bit by surprise. And this for me is one of those films. There are so many twists and turns in it. Um, and as I was watching it, I like you guys, I, I watched it a couple of times straight off bat. Um, but but that was because I it went it went it went through so many twists <laughs> that I couldn't keep up with it. It was just so deliciously packed with joke after joke after joke it was brilliant um then when i was i was kind of sort of thinking about it and i and i was thinking i actually need to see the um the previous version of it because there's stuff here that i couldn't follow make or make so much sense of it as a standalone um but i will come back to that in a minute um so and i am going to reveal a little bit of the thought process as I was going through it uh, in terms of the of the plot so forgive me for doing this um because if I get this right what we've got here is a film about the Lone Ranger living in an apartment in Brooklyn being mistaken for a bad guy who's the package thief by the neighbors um because all they see is the mask not the rest of the the Lone Ranger in his gear and then one day he happens to be collecting his mail when he comes face to face with this thief whom he chases out onto the road when he accidentally gets killed. <laughs> Which is brilliant. So far, then, so good. Yeah. And then feeling responsible for this man's death, our hero attends this crim's funeral 
<laughs> where there are many <laughs> other criminals also in masks uh, and where he somewhat haplessly lucks out with this girlfriend. <laughs> um, and then, I don't know, in the end, it turns out that the, the, the thief uh, who was killed had apparently just stockpiled everything that he'd purloined from everybody. And then when the police go in, they're sort of figuring out who's who's got what. And it's like Christmas because everybody's forgotten all the stuff that they'd ordered, including our hero who apparently ordered a new mask that also turns up. So, you know, it was kind of like, what the hell's all this? It's just detail after detail after detail. And, and just so rich in the way that it was it was kind of presented. Now, it's evidently a play on the word loan and the context that this ranger finds himself in. He's obviously a guy in a big city where, of course, many folks feel alone and lonely, um, where the heroes are, are most needed, I suppose, and where unexpected things kind of happen a lot. Um, and of course, it's crazy. Uh, so why wouldn't you use mariachi music to communicate a Mexican standoff between the Lone Ranger and his neighbours right at the beginning? Because it's it's all crazy. Um, and then, of course, there is the mask ranger versus, well, I initially when I was watching it, I was thinking, well, surely he's supposed to be Batman. It's, it's Gotham. It's New York, isn't it? Um, or Brooklyn. Um, but actually, it turns out it's not, I think, Batman. Anyway, both heroes, both wearing masks. Um, I think in the context in which it, this is portrayed, what you've got is the ranger actually being a bit more relatable uh, in a modern city than maybe the fantasy character might be with superpowers. I don't know. Um, but then I was looking at that relationship and I realised that, in fact, the connection isn't to Batman, but to maybe the Green Hornet, um, because it turns out that the Lone Ranger was meant to be a great nephew of his. So maybe what we have here is simply this kind of idea of a time warp and a new location um, and thereby an extension to the Green Hornet story. I don't know. Um, but our hero, he's not just a man in a mask. He's also a bit of a loser too, which I think was quite, well, I think that was one of the, the funniest sort of subtexts to it, really, the fact that this guy's a total loser. Um, I think in episode one, because because I had to go and watch episode one in order to try and pull some of my thinking together on it. Where where it where it comes through even more is that he is a total loser in episode one. He lucks out with his horse, Silver, who does a runner halfway through the, you know, navigating around the city. Uh, he's got a, a job as a, a hacker, uh, which he's rubbish at. Um, and his friend Tonto uh is is much better at him at getting all the girls. Um, so, <laughs> you know, it's kind of uh, it's it's kind of apt that all all of this is happening in episode two. I I definitely encourage you to episode to watch episode one. Um, my gut feeling is that episode three might go in a slightly different direction because this mask is clearly the magic. Uh, somehow, um, maybe maybe it will give him more luck. The new mask that is the one that he receives in the in the post. From the from the thief, I don't know. Um, so so all in all, then I think what you've got is something really zany. It's there's lots and lots of class classic um, film references and 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 characters in this who are really very zany and and each have their own personality and and you get a sense of how they're all being built up over over the series. Um, you know, obviously the central character, but Tonto, whatever Silver's doing and and the neighbours and all of these other sort of folks that there are pulled through in, in this particular film. And it, it kind of struck me a little bit like maybe what, this, maybe this is um, a, a, a friend's type approach that he's taking, or in this guy's case, maybe friendless, I don't know. Um, it's real fun, it's witty, the characters are amazingly well-developed. Um, I think even in this short, and it is quite short, um, uh, you you pick out such a lot of depth in each of them from the clips that that he shows you, and they are only really tiny clips. 
Um, I guess if you wanted to make it even shorter, what you could have done, what he could have done was maybe focused on just a couple of the characters, like that old couple at the beginning, which to me were the absolute best characters in this. Um, they, they, were, they were just hilarious. They'd almost got Tourette's in the way that they were portrayed. Um, it's a very cleverly done piece. Uh, I think, I do think you probably need to watch episode one as well in order to um, maintain the focus on the cent the central character of the ranger because I think the others do pull you in different directions. Um, I think placing this kind of well known and perhaps somewhat bumbling character in a new setting and in a different era is the genius in this. Um, I think it draws heavily on Johnny Depp's portrayal of the ranger rather than maybe the Clayton Moore. T do you remember the TV? Um, uh, Lone Ranger. Do you remember the, mm -hmm. the black and white TV series Clayton? Sure. Moore? Um, but I think it's more Johnny Depp than it is Clayton Moore. Um, which I think is 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 very very well done in that respect. Um, I guess you could say maybe there could be more coherence in the story, maybe. Um, but I think generally that would miss the point of the craziness of the of the scene that you're witnessing unfold in this in this piece um you know maybe maybe that's the whole point of, of what the biz is trying to illustrate in this um and in doing that i think what he's maybe pretty cleverly done actually is bring that kind of lone ranger character uh up 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 to date and and brought it to a contemporary audience uh which i think is that's incredibly well done. Very, very well thought through and presented in in how that's been done. I really enjoyed watching it, Phil. It was it was awesome work, and congratulations to the team that worked on it. It's brilliant. Yeah that that uh, that couple at the beginning with with just the the escalating adjectives yes. uh, synony synonyms yes uh, um, reminded me. Uh, that, it, to me, I, I I sensed a Monty Python influence there, like mm -hmm. uh, the constitutional peasant sketch from Monty Python and Holy Grail, where he he just comes up with more and more ways to talk about how ridiculous yes. Arthur's Arthur's uh, uh, sword legacy story is. Um, th this this had that, and just of course, just keeps going and going. Like you think you think he's run out of adjectives, and it just there's another. <laughs> another pair there that just oh it just again that's one where i laughed over some of them and and the second time i watched it i turned on subtitles so i wouldn't miss any because yeah uh one of them i think was deviant devious purloiner yeah purloined <laughs> not a yeah. word i use very often but i had to use it it's you great don't word. hear americans use the word purloin very often yeah <laughs> that is that's that's just great great stuff the, you mentioned the uh, the Lone Ranger uh, Johnny Depp, but you mean the movie that Johnny Depp was in that was about the Lone Ranger because he That's didn't right. play the Lone Ranger. Uh, he played no, Tonto. No, he I'm played not Tonto. That's it. Yeah, yes, yeah. Yes, Army yes. Hammer, I think, played the Lone Ranger. That's but you're right. talking in terms of that lighter, yes, com comedic approach to it. Yeah, That's no, right. I, yeah, I can see that. Yeah, um, yeah. I'll close and ju and just say that I think my my favorite. <laughs> The part that I couldn't help but laugh out loud at both the first and second time was when they're in the lobby and everyone's opening the packages that, that they found. And it's a just a beautiful one, two, three comedic setup. The three landing on, I finally got my robot mail order bride. <laughs> yes. And then just in the background, someone just goes, yuck. <laughs> Because every one of the every one of the gift reveal or the box reveals had a response. That's it's like right. a question and then an answer. So this thing happened and then that. And then it's the puppy and everyone, oh, and then my real little robot bride. Yuck. <laughs> oh, it's just so just just wonderful. Wonderfully executed. So yeah, as a as a fan of as a fan of witty writing and of comedy writing, which is uh, when you see it done, it's weird how it works because when you see it done so well, if you're paying attention, it makes you realize 
even more how hard it is to do it well. Uh, comedy writing is hard. And uh, it's just it's just wonderful. He made it look easy. Like it, it, it didn't feel strained or pushed. Uh, it just it, it felt like. This is the biz in. In the business element, you yeah. know what I'm saying? And uh, oh, it's just exciting to see. Uh, I, I've, I've I, I recognize several of the voice actors, though I don't think I could identify them by name. But probably from his previous work, and I think there's some overlap. Maybe some of the some of the actors that he used also make their own films and stuff. Because some of these voices are are very recognizable to me. Yeah. Um, and probably someone who is part of uh, the movies underground would recognize Big's, most of them by that, name, right? Yeah. And I Big's, just I just Big's I track. came along too late for that. Yeah. Uh, yeah, because yeah. they have that, that community yeah, exactly, where they exactly help each other out. Track. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Anyway, and so I think there's something to be said too for uh, uh, when you get to reuse. Maybe Damien, maybe you've experienced this to some degree. When you get to reuse some of the same actors over the course of several episodes, even if they're not in the same room when you're recording, there's a certain kind of chemistry and a rhythm and, and stuff that starts to evolve. That when you're just doing a one-off, you just don't get. And these are these are actors who are experienced and I, I suspect experienced performing his work so they know how to deliver these lines and maybe experienced working with each other too and uh, again that's just I don't know of a better word to describe that for me than just it's a delight to see uh, when when someone is is uh, in their element so yeah I'm I'm very happy about this one. Ricky, uh, I guess we'll give you the final word. Uh, AI Ricky, what did you uh, what did you think of the business latest film here? Space might be the last frontier, but it certainly is full of a lot of junk now. Oh, man, I was reading an article that said that space is so full of crap that you can't even get past it. <laughs> Sounds like real mess. Well, I'm kind of glad I didn't have to follow that. Yeah, yeah. I think Ricky's leaning into the Monty Python influence a little bit with oh. the crazy answer yeah. there. So, yeah. well done, Ricky. Good job. <laughs> anyway, this has been our episode. On behalf of myself, Phil Rice, Damian Valentine, and Tracy Harwood, and AI Ricky. We will see you next time. If you'd like to give us feedback, do so in the comments or drop us an email at talk at completelymachinima.com. We'll see you at the next episode. Thanks a lot. Bye.